to Pure Strength 3, coming to you direct from Stirling Castle in Scotland. This year we have teams from America, from Great Britain, from the Netherlands, and for the first time I see eight strong men, all taking part in television's quest to find the strongest nation in the world. Well, referee of the gruelling events you're about to see coming up, and my fellow commentator, Jeff Capes. Hi, Alison. Hi, Jeff. And just how strong are these men? Well, in one word, I think it's awesome. In fact, one of the competitors we've nicknamed the Nightmare. <laughs> I won't tell you which one, he probably hit me. But um, no, I think 16 events in four days is probably the most grueling testing event that I've been associated with. I'm sure the competitors will say the same. Some of the events, while well, they've never been seen before, they've been looked at, they've been devised so we can not trip them up, but actually test every ounce of strength throughout the body. Yeah! So, eight super-fit strongmen raring to go. Leading the American team, Bill Kazmaier from Alabama. Bill's six foot three inches tall and weighs 320 pounds. His teammate is the colossal O.D. Wilson from North Carolina, six foot seven inches tall, weighing 385 pounds. The British team, the tallest man in the competition, 25-year-old Mark Higgins, just under seven feet tall and a weight of 350 pounds. Partnering Mark is 27-year-old Jamie Reeves, six foot three inches tall, a weight of 325 pounds of sheer muscle. And the newcomers, the Icelanders, Magnus Ver Magnusson, six foot one, weight 280 pounds. His partner is Holti Arneson, 26 years of age, six foot three and 300 pounds. The Dutch team, 31-year-old Charlie Vandenbosch, six foot four and 325 pounds. And partnering Charlie is the oldest man in the competition, 39-year-old Ab Walders. He may be the smallest man at six foot one, but certainly one of the strongest. And as the contestants prepare to do battle, the Americans Bill Kazmaier and O.D. Wilson get to grips with the specially made gigantic 100-pound broadswords for the sword and chalice strength test. Are you ready? Take the strain. Go! Each team must hold the broadswords at arm's length. On the cross tips of the swords is a wine glass balanced on a plate. The combined weight to be held for as long as possible is 210 pounds, a real test of pure strength. The British team of Jamie Reeves and Mark Higgins holding firm, the Americans Kazmaier and Wilson holding at a slightly lower angle. But the Dutch already in trouble. The Icelanders Magnusson and Arneson in a high hold but wavering. The British and the Americans seem to have it well in hand. Bit of movement there, but the pressure really building on the enormous shoulders of these strong men. And the first to lose it are the Icelanders. A poor time for these newcomers to pure strength. The British contestant Jamie Reeves looks totally unconcerned. The Dutch having serious problems now. Vandenbosch won't be able to hold it for very much longer. JB and Mark holding on in there. Charlie really struggling now. And the Dutch team lose it after one minute and 19 seconds. And now it's just the British and the Americans left. The Americans won it last year. Can they repeat their victory here at Stirling Castle? Looks like the British team are in trouble now. Needs all the teamwork they can muster. And the strain really beginning to show on Mark Higgins' face. He's not going to hold on to it. No, and it's gone. One minute and 48 seconds for them. But there's no doubt about the winners. It's the Americans, O.D. Wilson and Bill Kazmaier, with a time of one minute and 55 seconds. Bill Kazmaier there with a big smile on his face. The Americans off to a fine start in this first event. Hey, it's really tough out here holding this thing. It's super heavy. You know, this is O.D.'s first time at the World's Strongest Man competition outside of powerlifting. If he didn't have any experience, I think he did real well. O.D., how was that for you? It felt pretty good. I had a pretty good teacher. He's strong. <laughs> He's real strong. Oh, 
man. <laughs> okay. British team, Jamie and Mark, we thought you had the Americans then. What went wrong? Well, I think I got the DTs and I don't drink. <laughs> uh, very tough event. We've lost one battle, but we're still in the war and we've got a lot more fighting as yet. No confidence lost yet? No, this is just the start of things. We'll, uh, we'll warm up as we go through the competition. Brave words, but in event one, Sword and Chalice gives the Americans 10 points, Great Britain take eight, Holland six, and Iceland four points. This next event is an event which neither myself or Mark have ever done. It involves lifting these two 220 kilo logs, which is around 500 pounds, onto the trestles there. And large, they're around five foot high. So that in itself is going to be a feat of strength lifting the logs on. We don't know whether it can be done. And as for cutting them and then running with them, well, what do you think, Mark? Well, I think we're probably uh, fitter than the Americans and we're also a little bit taller, so it should suit us. But uh, they are very heavy, so there's a lot of strength that will come into play as well. Are you ready? Go! So it's the Americans versus the British in the first heat of log cut. The teams must straddle the logs and heave them any way they can to the trestles, then the tough part really begins. And at the trestles, it's the British just ahead of the Americans. That's the easy bit over. Don't forget that these logs weigh 500 pounds apiece. Each team must lift the log into the trestle, chop it in half with their axes, and then drag the two halves to the battlements. The Americans struggling a bit there, but no such problems for the British pair, their log already firmly wedged in the chopping trestle. And as the British start to chop through the log, the Americans finally have their log in position. They seem to be taking it quite a lot easier. And this is hard, wet wood, those axes making very little impression. The American slow start seems to have paid off. They appear to have more energy, whilst the British pair are tiring fast. All they have to do is break those logs in half. And now, oh dear, has decided to use his massive weight to speed things along. And it works. And Mark and Jamie decide to copy OD's successful style. Kazmaier well on his way now to the battlements. OD's dragging his log along. Looks like he's taking a dog for a walk. But this dog weighs a staggering 300 pounds, but he's not hurrying, taking it very easy there. And that's a disaster for the British, as Mark Higgins gets the entire 300-pound weight on his stomach. The Americans have reached the battlements. And Mark, with a little encouragement from Jeff Cates, tries to get over a severe winding. Jamie Reeves, though, on his own at the moment. But the Americans, slow to start, fast to finish. Jamie's still struggling without his teammate. But Mark Higgins finally rejoins his partner for the last section of the log pull, and he's not a happy man. OD back on the bench, waiting for the Brits to finish. And that's what happened. Both parts of the log falling onto the unfortunate Mark Higgins. But a good fast run for the Americans in just under two minutes. Judges, are you ready? Track clear. Good. Come on, are you Charlie. ready? Come on. Go! Come on. No Into heat two, it's Holland versus Iceland. Charlie Vandenbosch, okay. Av Walders for Holland, Holti Arneson and Magnus Ver Magnusson for Iceland. And the Dutch are moving very quickly to the trestles. Although the Icelanders are smaller men, they managed to heave that log into the trestle faster than the Dutch. Remember, 500 pounds worth of wet pine log. Ab and Charlie still struggling with their log. The Icelanders chopping already, and they're going through that log like butter. A nice style there. Charlie Van and Bosch obviously not that keen on lumberjacking. Turn the log, come on! And look at that, a very fast time to the log break by the Icelanders. 
Now, if they can get a fast pull to the battlements, they should win this without a problem. The Dutch really slowing down here. But the Icelanders have 10 feet to go. And Charlie Vandenbosch really trying to do himself an injury, and it hasn't worked. Not a wise move after what happened to Mark Higgins in the first heat. No such problems for the Icelanders, handling their 300-pound log sections like matchsticks. And they finish the race in an incredibly good time of one and a half minutes, beating the Americans' first heat time. The Dutch finally make the break, but they're way down the field. That was a very fast time. How did it feel? Great. Very great. What was the easiest part for you? Thank you for the cutting. How was it for you? Uh, well, the people in Iceland, they have a great expectation for us because we won the World Championship up in Canada, the team trophy there. So we were off with a very bad start. But in Iceland, we say that a uh, bad start often brings good end. This is uh, our first time, and it is a good feeling that we proved that, that we can do something. Well, we started after seeing the first hit. We thought we'd do it nice and slowly and finish before them, but one way in the middle, something went wrong. But the Icelanders, with an incredible time, gives them 10 points. USA in second place take eight. Great Britain third, despite Mark's fall, gives them six points. And Holland four. So after the first two events, United States lead with 18 points. In joint second, it's Great Britain and Iceland on 14. And Holland bringing up the rear with 10. And so the battle for points continues up there at the castle, in an area that's well used to man's struggle for superiority and excellence. This is Stirling Old Bridge, where in 1297, William Wallace defeated the English forces at the start of the Wars of Independence. Today, it's one of Stirling's best-known landmarks. We're here, we'll take a short break. Back in a couple of moments with more Pure Strength events. See you then. From one of Scotland's most historical strongholds, built on volcanic rock, Stirling Castle towers above the town it was named after, as our mighty men now prepare for their next challenge of strength. Next event brick lift. The lifter must start with his hands on the brick. No other part of the body is allowed. So it will be up, one, two, down. First lifter in the brick lift, Charlie Van den Bosch, Holland. Twelve bricks in your own time, one minute, starting from now. Good lift, down. And each of those bricks weighs five pounds. Next lifter, Odie Wilson, USA. So their first warm-up lift is Good a weight lift. of 60 down. pounds. Good. Third lifter, Iceland, Magnuson. Ready, go. As Jeff Cape said, it's the squeeze and lift technique which makes this event so demanding. Good lift. Down. Fourth competitor, Great Britain, Mark Higgins. Slow my lot today. This is going to drop on my foot. <laughs> Ready? Go. Good lift. Down. And they make the first round look easy. No problems with 12 bricks, but now it's up to 18 bricks, a weight of 90 pounds. Charlie Vandenbosch for Holland. Good lift. O.D. Wilson, the USA. Good lift. Down. Magnus for Magnuson for Iceland. No problem for him. The big man, Britain's six foot nine Mark Higgins, now fully recovered from his log roll. Good 
Good lead. Down. All the competitors still in the running as the number of bricks has increased to 20 and a weight of 100 pounds. No lead. Each man can have two attempts. Van den Bosch goes for his second one. Good lead. And it's good. O.D. Wilson on 20 bricks. But fails to make it and opts out. Mark Higgins attempting 21, but he too fails to make it and is out. And Charlie Van den Bosch out on 22, leaving Ver Magnussen to attempt the lift of 22 bricks, a total weight of 110 pounds. And he does it to give Iceland an excellent win and a good chance to win the Trebor Extra Strong Trophy. Uh, it was tough, but it's the first time I tried it, so I'm very surprised to win it. Is it a trick to be able to do that with the squeeze? Tell me about that. Yeah, I think so. It's a, it's a bit of technique. It's the hardest point is when you turn it around and you know, start controlling it. First time, you know, in the chest and hands. Good lift! Yeah! So, Iceland take 10 points, Holland 8, Great Britain 6, and the American team 4. Hello, uh, excuse me. Oh, uh, there you are. Well, I've now been joined by the giants down here in front of the castle for the last challenge of the day. It's called the car pull, and it works like this. The two teams race together. Now, the first man in each team starts off by pulling the lighter vehicle, that's the Volkswagen Golf, uh, 30 metres using a hand over hand pulling technique. Got that, lads? Right, once he's across the finish line, the second uh, man in the team, dressed in this harness here, starts pulling the, uh, the heavier vehicle, that's the Volkswagen Passat, the 30 metres. And when both vehicles are across the line, the clock stops. And harnessed up in blue for Iceland, it's Holti Arneson, and for Holland, it's Ab Walders. But the towers who will start the event are Magnussen for Iceland and Van den Bosch for Holland. You ready, Holland? Ready, Iceland? Are you ready? Go! And getting those cars off the line is the toughest part. Once they're rolling, it's speed, strength, and a super strong grip. These men are heaving these smaller saloons, each containing four 12-stone people, a total weight of £2,000 per car. And Holland's Van den Bosch is over the line first and sets off his teammate Ab Walders. Iceland's Holti Arneson right on his tail. Just look at this flying Dutchman move. He's 13 years older than his opponent Arneson, but he's sprinting now. An easy victory for Ab Walders. Charlie, you're right. What's happened to the hand? Well, it's already happened in one of the first events, but it doesn't get any better right now with these events. Let's have a look. Ah, God, did that really hurt? No, you don't feel it when you do it. It hurts now, but not at that time. Yeah, that was terrific carpool. Yeah, and I had the advantage that he pulled a little quicker than Magnus, and so I could start. And if he's behind you and he's pushing you on, it went all right. Mark, you're chasing Holland's time of 18.6. That's the first pull we've been told. We're going to do it. I'm uh, fairly confident at this. We're, uh, Jamie's a good puller uh, with the harness, and I'm pretty good with the ropes. So all being well, we should uh, be in for some good points here. Stand by, pullers. Sign keeper. So in heat two, it's USA versus Great Britain. Mark, yes. are you ready? Go! Kaz Meyer and Higgins doing the heaving. Odie Wilson and Jamie Reeves harnessed up for stage two. And Mark's predictions for this section coming true as he uses every inch of his massive body to heave this Volkswagen Golf towards the line. And he's made it, giving teammate Jamie Reeves a head start. Odie Wilson struggling to close that gap. But just watch Jamie get that power on, heaving his body weight down for maximum traction. Pulling well ahead of the American for a conclusive win in the final event for the Trebor Extra Strong Trophy. But out of the two heats, who has the fastest time? Wow, Jamie. 
You sprinted up there. Yeah. Um, the partner gave me a good lead again. So uh, I know the only thing I had to do was just stay ahead of OD. Yeah. So, uh, what was in your mind? What did you think to spur you on? Oh, just trying to get to this line as fast as I could. Um, we didn't really need some good points out of this event, you know, this challenge. So it was a very critical event for us. And uh, we came through good. But no luck for the Americans with the slowest time of the day. A little bit better. It was a great video. <laughs> well, it might ease the pain to know that you won that one. Yeah, we're very pleased with that because, you know, we didn't start off so well, but this is a good victory. Well, I can tell you it was a very close victory. Ab, point one of a second. Yeah, well, we trained not on, on power. We trained on this kind of events. Speed, explosive power, because there's a lot of carrying, running, and let's hope it plays out on the end. But till now, it's going fine. So after the final event, Holland take 10 points, Great Britain 8, Iceland 6 and USA 4th with 4 points. At the end of 4 events of Pure Strength 3, the final placings put Iceland in the lead with 30 points, Great Britain and Holland level pegging in 2nd place with 28 points and last year's winners, the USA in 4th place with 26. Well, Helty and Magnus, well done. You've got the most points, you must be delighted. Yes, we are very happy to be the first of the first day, but uh, it's a fourth day's competition and there are three more to go. But I think we have uh, many good events left, so we are not giving up. Well, Magnus, this is the first time that Iceland has taken part in Pure Strength. Yes, it is. And we will do as well as we can. You train together quite a lot. Yeah, we train for the powerlifting in Iceland. It's like a circle. We do powerlifting in the winter time when it's cold and dark. <laughs> and when the sun shows up, we come over to Scotland for pure strength, whatever we can do for a strongman, and it's a very nice. So Iceland, newcomers to pure strength, just marginally out in front. But all that can change next week when we have four more tests of strength, stamina and endurance on pure strength three. Join us then. There was thunder in heaven. to Pure Strength 3, coming direct to you from Stirling in Scotland, famed for its bloody battles for Robert the Bruce, King of the Scots, and for its historic stronghold, Stirling Castle, where our mighty test of strength is being staged. Out in front at the moment on a narrow lead, it's newcomers to Pure Strength, Iceland, ahead of the other international competitors. And here are the leaders in the competition, Icelanders Magnus Ver Magnusson and Holti Arneson preparing for the first event. In blue, representing Great Britain at six foot three, Jamie Reeves, his partner six foot nine, Mark Higgins. <laughs> Ab Walders, six foot one, representing Holland, with teammate Charlie Vandenbosch right, at six foot four. For the USA, O.D. Wilson on the left at six foot seven, and Bill Kazmaier, six foot three. And our first challenge would test the strength of even this big brute. It's the bow and axe contest held here in the Queen Anne Gardens, a 17th century royal bowling green, though no sign of anyone bowling here today. Though one or two spectators might well be bowled over by what they're about to see. It's all about archery and weighted axes. This is how it works. Our four teams of two strongmen stand back to back. Now the archers start off the contest. They're holding arrows on bowstrings tensioned to an amazing 100 pounds. Jeff, pick it up from there. And then they have to draw the arrow back, which has two white marks on it. And the furthest white mark has to pass through the handle. And if I see the white mark pass through the handle, he has to release the arrow. Right. And on the word shoot, his competitor partner has to lift an axe at arm's length and hold it as long as possible. That's some axe. Until the pain gets him. And he lowers it down to a tape. And when the axe touch, touches the tape, the time will stop. Now, hang on, Jeff. You were holding that with two hands. Is That's that allowed? Right. No, it's heavy. 
<laughs> the wimp. Yeah. So it's one hand out straight. One hand out straight until they touch the tape, and then the time will cease. And making it look easy is our archery champion, Philip Van Buren, who prepared the bows. And Roll line up right to left in bow and axe, the USA, Holland, Great Britain and Iceland. Begin! <coughs> and the Icelander Magnusson already having trouble despite encouragement from his teammate. Iceland shoot! This is going to be a tough one for the Icelanders. That lead-handled axe weighs 130 pounds, and it's going to be a long hold for Holti Arnason. The Dutch fire at Walders takes up the axe. Iceland still going strong. England and USA maintaining the tension on the bowstrings. Britain lose it. Wilson for the USA fires after one minute and 16 seconds. That means that Kazmaier should have a short axe hold to win. No, not the other way. USA lower it a bit. Holti Arneson has already Kasmaier. been holding his axe for one minute. Kasmaier. Surely he can't last much longer. Kasmaier. Kasmaier. And Kazmaier getting back support there from his partner. And just look at the lineup, USA agonizing USA concentration. Looks like it's no problem for the incredibly strong Jamie Reeves of Great Britain or for Walders of Holland. USA lower in a bit. Reeves in trouble now. Now Walders for Holland loses it and Jamie Reeves follows suit. Another triumph for the top Americans, Bill Kazmaier and Odie Wilson. I have a feeling I know the safest place to be. Between these two guys, Odie. What's up? Terrific. Yeah, it was outstanding. A little hard, though. Had to strive a little bit to give my part on the left of time, but I hung in there. Yeah. So it was pretty good. What did you think to yourself? I was thinking I couldn't let him down. I ain't going to let him down the rest of the day, so we're going for it. Right. That's right. How are those muscles feeling? Great. Just a little tired. <laughs> They're great. You'd be surprised what that bow takes out of you. But it does, so it's the first time I ever handled one like that. And it was great. Bill, he gave you a terrific start, well, eh? Did he come through? An extra five seconds, that's all I needed. Yeah. I knew Jamie and Mark would be awfully tough. He came through, it was great. Yeah, were they your biggest competitors in this one, do you think? Yeah, they won last year, and we were, if we could beat them, we'd, you know, we'd take the first place. I'm happy we did, we needed the 10 points. We'll just take a close look at the pure strength of these gigantic athletes in the final agonizing moments of bow and axe. And the results after the first event are USA first with 10 points, Great Britain second with eight, Holland third with six, and four points to Iceland. Well, I'm now standing between the inner and outer defence walls. This particular part of the uh, castle was built in 1500 by James IV. But uh, this whole area is steeped in history. And as you stroll around, you hear the schoolchildren mentioning the famous words of Robert the Bruce, hero of the Battle of Bannockburn, just three miles or so up the road. He said, try and try and try again. In other words, never give up. I'm sure that's going to become the motto of our strong men as they prepare to do battle on this cobbled hill climb. It's called the waiting game. It's all uh, based on carrying provisions into the castle up there. Now, it works like this. Our competitors have to gather sandbags, bales and barrels, and then they have to race them, oh, 50 metres up that one in four gradient up there. Uh, the total weight, about a thousand pounds. Oh, I wish there was something cool to drink in this particular barrel. It requires strength, it requires stamina, and it requires speed. Well, I think this wouldn't be any problem, because the weight is not so heavy. So I think this is for yours. This is mine. What do you think about the sack? He's taking the sack. I'm the biggest one, so I can't lift that weight that, weight that height. So he's sure that he'll probably take the sack. I'll try it first. What do you think it weighs? Uh, it's 200 pounds. Yeah, I think something, like that. something about 180. Uh -huh. And then these things, it's probably most difficult because you can't put them on your head or on your shoulder, so it's probably the trying? most di difficult ones. I tried to put it on my shoulder, but it wouldn't go, so it's probably before your belly all the way. And we have problems with that, I think. Are you ready? And they're off, bursting through the massive gates of Stirling Castle. Odie Wilson and Holti Arneson pick up the double bales. Will Kazmaier and Magnus Vermagnusson grab the 200-pound sandbags. And the race is on up the cobbled hill. 
And look at this American go. No wonder they call him the nightmare. Six foot seven inches and 385 pounds of muscle on the move. Kazmar and Magnussen bringing up the rear. And now each man has to pick up a 200 pound barrel and race it to the top of the hill. OD has his barrel, but it doesn't look securely balanced. No, in fact, it trips on the first bend. Oh, and it's a disaster as the barrel goes over the wall and into the courtyard below. Now, he'll have to collect that if he wants to continue. So that's given Arneson the lead for Iceland in heat one. But Kazmaier has decided to give his partner a chance to retrieve his barrel by using blocking tactics to delay the Icelander. There'll be some trouble now. And yes, referee Jeff Capes penalises the Americans. And that was a pretty risky thing. Uh, the barrel Kazmaier knocked off the Icelander's shoulders actually glanced off his own partner, OD, in the lower courtyard. OD, I think it's fair to say without any exaggeration whatsoever that you're lucky to have survived that. Yeah, I guess you can say that. I'm pretty lucky to be here after what happened to me just now, but I'm here, ready to go on with the competition. Does that make you feel a bit shaky? Not really. It's all in battle, you know. When you're in this kind of, when you're doing this kind of thing, you're doing this kind of sport, you got to expect that the unexpected always happens. So when it's happened, we all strong men. We're supposed to be the strongest men in the world. So you have to just throw that one over your shoulder and go ahead on, go ahead on with it. So that's what I plan to do. From your point of view, O.D., what did happen? Well, <clears throat> first off, the, the barrels wasn't tested like it should have been. And when I picked the barrel up. I took off so fast with it. I, I, I anticipated that I could make a turn, but I couldn't turn. So I got off balance about right here. And when I got off balance, my momentum just took me forward and I dropped my barrel. So I went down and retrieved it. I got, when I got to the bottom to retrieve it, I took about five seconds to take my breath and everything. And by the time I got ready to hoist it back onto my shoulders, I looked up, somebody, I don't know who it was, but I think it saved my life. Somebody um, hollered out, look out, heads up. And when I looked up, I saw the shadow of a barrel coming down. And when I threw my hand up to block it, I caught the repercussion of it on my arm, and it jarred up my back. And it just kind of like paralyzed me temporarily, but I'm okay now. It was an unfortunate accident, what happened just now. And I just, I just thank God that I'm still here able to talk about it. Thank you, Rice. Are ready, boys? This is it. Yeah. Thank Timekeepers. You, ready? ready? Go. So in the next heat, it's Great Britain against Holland. Ab Walders there, known as the fastest, strongest man in the world. Can he live up to it? And as they head up the hill, it's Mark Higgins and Charlie Vandenbosch for the bales and Reeves and Walders with the sandbags. A good start there by the tall Mark Higgins as he takes the lead. And Jamie Reeves in third position, closing in now on Charlie Vandenbosch. And don't forget, they're racing for the Trebor Extra Strong Trophy. And now it's the top part of the uh, race, the barrel run. Jamie Reeves makes a fast pick up and takes the lead. His partner, Mark Higgins, in second place. But it's a great run for the British team. A very fast time indeed. And just look at Jamie Reeves go up that one in four cobbled hill. And the British have it. The hero of that particular run, Jamie. Can you talk yet? Yeah, sure. Um, throughout the year, I've been very badly injured, and this is my first competition bike. So I'm maybe down on strength, but I've been doing a lot of running and endurance work, and I think that paid off for this event. And it certainly did. <laughs> Jamie Reeves, strong as an ox, going like a rocket. So with the disqualification of the American team in Heat 1, the Icelanders will run against the clock to see if they can set the fastest time. And they really are out to win. A little easier for them without any other traffic on the course, but don't forget they've already run half an event against the Americans so, all in all, a fairly equal test of endurance. And this looks like it's going to be the fastest time. Here's a well 
well-deserved win after the American football tactics they endure from Bill Kazmaier in Heat 1. Well, we were very unlucky in the two forward holds. So, we, I think we are the fittest of the competitors. And I think Kazmaier were not very fair to push Magnus over in the first round. Uh -huh. And, you know, when things get tougher, we get evil. <laughs> and that is what happens. Like the Viking warriors, yeah. they can't be beaten. How, whatever the tricks they are using against us, we are never surrounded. You sound very determined. Thank you. And thank you, Holti and Magnus, for a determined performance. So at the end of Heat 2, Iceland take 10 points, Great Britain 8, Holland 6, and the Americans no. Overall placings mean that Great Britain and Iceland have moved up into joint first with 44, Holland in third with 40, and the Americans have dropped right back into fourth position with 36. battery built as another line of defense for the castle way back in 1709 and these cannons saw action at the Battle of Trafalgar they were constructed at the local Caron ironworks but this program is all about men of iron next an individual event one man from each team and we're gonna see how many times they compress two 100 pound dumbbells above their head the first competitor will be Charlie Van den Bosch from Holland <laughs> Tell me when you're ready, Charlie. Begin! One. Two. Three. Come on. Three. Come on, Charlie. Come on, Four. Come on. Five. Five. Come on, six. Six. Come on. Six. Come on. Six. Come on. Six. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What's your time? Hop! Okay, just out your face, out your face. Squat it. Boom! Eight! Come on, Charlie. The next competitor, Jamie Reeves, Great Britain. has decided to have a go at this event despite his injuries incurred in the previous event. He's not expecting to perform very well, but is a man of incredible guts and determination. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no. Come on, Odie, you good. Come on. Come on, Gordy. Come on, bear down now. Let's go. Two. 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 Three. 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 Come on, Six, come on. Seven, eight, seven. Come on, Audrey. Seven. 
He's hurt. Yeah. His back's hurt bad. He's a tough man. He's a hell of a competitor, simple as that. I mean, is it, is it worth it, Bill? Does he have to go through that? Well, he doesn't know anything else but excellence. Being a supreme being, being a physical animal. Can't get him to stop. You saw him, he couldn't even do one. He came back and did 13 more. But Bill, I, I mean, what was going through Odie's mind? I have to ask you. He wants to win. You more look, than anything. You look pretty upset by it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Next lifter, Healthy Arneson. Oh, yeah. Ready? Okay. Begin. One. 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 Come on, Come on, Come on, Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, good. Ten. Eleven. Come on. Eleven. Come on. 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 Well, nobody could match the magnificent performance of Britain's Jamie Reeves pumping a staggering 28 lifts. Closest was the injured O.D. Wilson with 14, an achievement really to be proud of. So in the dumbbell press, Great Britain take 10 points, USA second take 8, Iceland 6, and Holland on 4 points. Our last challenge of the day brings a whole new meaning to towing a vehicle. Lined up here are four seven and a half ton Mercedes trucks, each one weighing the equivalent of two adult bull elephants. The challenge is this. We're going to ask each team to pull a truck using a hand over hand technique some 30 meters to the finish line. It's a tough one. Feeders. Are you ready, competitors? Are you ready? Go! Remember, they're pulling seven tons across that car park. There's not a lot in it over the first 20 feet as they try to get the momentum going. It's neck and neck at the halfway point. It's a real team effort. If they don't get the coordination sorted fairly quickly, they'll lose ground. The Americans seem to have the edge. Iceland and Great Britain, dead heat in second place. Holland fourth at the moment. But the Americans certainly have their style perfected as they heave the giant Mercedes tractor units towards the line. America first, Iceland second. And with the final pull, the Dutch pip the British at the post to take third place. Bill, Bill. Oh, D's got the deadlift. He's coming off a workout of about 850 for five off the floor. He's a 900 pound deadlifter. He's got the back. Oh, I backing me up. Stayed right with me. It was great. Went hard. A good team then. He's a heck of a teammate. He's learning with every pull, everything he does. Got to give him so much credit. He's never seen this stuff before. That was some pull. Nightmare woke up. That's all I got to say. It's time for us to get going. 
I mean, I had so many unfortunate accidents, so many setbacks and so many problems, but it's time to go. These guys are tough. I'm surprised, but I think it's going to go down to the wire, so it's time to get serious. It, the United States pulling back after a disastrous earlier event to take 10 points, Iceland in second to get eight, Holland third get six, and Great Britain take four points. And that puts the overall scorings at the end of program two with Great Britain and Iceland in joint first with 58, the USA third on 54, and Holland dropping back into fourth place with 50. It's still a very close battle. So the teamwork of the valiant Vikings and the gentle giants of Great Britain giving them a narrow lead, but surely the Americans' Kaz and the nightmare won't allow this to continue. Watch next week for more thrills, four more events in Pure Strength 3. There was thunder in heaven the night. The world came crashing down. And from the wreck of the carnage they came. Superman to claim a crown. The land shook. The seas raged. As giants watching. to another Pure Strength 3 coming to you from central Scotland, an area renowned for its uncertain weather, but we're now enjoying temperatures in the 80s and the heat is well and truly on for our four international teams, with Iceland and Great Britain tying in first place on a narrow lead, but surely the strength of the Americans won't allow that to continue. In the days when Stirling Castle was built, jousting was the most popular form of head-to-head -head combat. Well, for event one in pure strength, we've got a more up-to-date version. It's called the pole push, team against team, using this 12-foot long pole. Now, the idea is this. Each team tries to push their opponents out of the ring. As soon as one foot is over the rope, the whistle is blown. Now, this was devised in Japan for sumo wrestlers as part of their training program to give them balance, ooh, timing, and above all, strength. Representing Iceland is Magnus Ver Magnusson and Holti Arneson. Great Britain, Mark Higgins and Jamie Reeves. United States, O.D. Wilson and Bill Kazmaier. And for Holland, Charlie Van den Bosch and Ab Walders. OK, competitors please, for pole push, United States of America and Holland. On my right, Holland. On my left, USA. Pick up the pole. Take the strain. Well, an instant swift maneuver by the Americans throwing Ab Walters for Holland out of the circle, and he won't be pleased about that. But it's not surprising if you consider the Dutchman is up against a combined weight of over 700 pounds, with six foot seven OD and six foot three Kazmaier. Next two competitors: Great Britain and Iceland. Thank you. Okay, when you're ready, lads. On my left, Iceland. On my right, Great Britain. Pick up the pole. That way a bit. That way a bit. That way a bit. A bit more. A bit more. Are you ready? Come on, come Iceland win. Now, that really is a surprise because on this occasion, the smaller, lighter men from Iceland managed to knock out the 6 foot 9, 25 stone frame of Mark Higgins and his 6 foot 2, 23 stone teammate Jamie Reeves. You can see the excellent footwork and teamwork of the Icelandic team as they outwit the British lads. Just one foot out of the ring, remember, to decide the winner. So, to decide third and fourth position, the losers of Heats 1 and 2 play off. Pick up the pole. Great Britain versus Holland. To your right, go to your right, please. Take the strain. Great 
Burnham win. Well, that's like nothing we've ever done on pure strength before. No, nothing we've ever done, I don't think, either. Uh, tough event, though. We need a lot of balance and strength. But uh, it was very close between us and Iceland. I think we just stepped over before then. But uh, it's like it's been all the way through competition. We're all very evenly matched, as you can see, with points, which makes it a better competition. And to the final for first and second positions, the USA versus Iceland. Don't forget, you pick up the pole and wait until I say and blow the whistle. Pick up the log. The smallest team take on the biggest. Kazmaier and Wilson versus Magnussen and Arneson. Take the strain. Well, as expected, no real contest there. Size and weight seemingly all important in the pole push. Well, Bill, off to a good start then, Programme 3 for the USA. Yeah, that's a power event, obviously. With OD backing me up behind me, they can't move him, and I just put a little power on and push him out. So after the first event, the scoreboard reads, the USA, 10 points. Iceland take eight, Great Britain six, and Holland on four points. Our next event comes courtesy of the Stirling County Rugby Football Club, who've lent us their scrum machine. Thanks, lads. Actually, they've had a, a good year this year. They've just been promoted to the Scottish First Division. Now, normally, their uh, pack of eight would battle with this monster, but the challenge now is for each team, remember, of just two men, to push this against the clock. Well, I'm uh, dressed for the part. Jeff, do you think we can do this? Oh, no way, Alison. You, you can't, you're joking. Oh. No way. You're kidding. No, no way. Oh, but the teams will. Just watch this. Are you ready? These men are pushing an enormous metal sled carrying a total weight of 1,500 pounds over a 20 meter course. And Bill Kazmaier and O.D. Wilson going strong right from the start. But this is where the strain begins to tell halfway down the course. But they've made a tactical error. Instead of staying low, they've dug the front in and they're stuck. It's going to be a hell of a job to move it and only have one minute pushing time. And they've exhausted their time limit. Kind of hard to steer when your head's looking at the ground. Yeah. Time keepers. Are you ready? Yeah. The Dutch looking very strong on the first part of the course. Both keeping low there. Oh, but Charlie's pulled that weak hamstring again. Looks like he's unable to continue. No, I don't think it's going to work for the Dutch this time. Ab's encouraging his partner to move again. It looks like they might be going for it. Come on. No, time's up. What a brave man, Charlie Vandenbush. What happened? I don't know. I thought Epps stood on my heel, but he said he didn't, so something must have snapped or whatever. Yeah, it would. It just went. You felt it going. I just, somebody hit me there, so Epps was the only one there, so I thought it was him, but he said, <laughs> I didn't touch you. So then I knew it was serious. Timekeepers. Competitors, are you ready? Yeah. 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 Well, the Icelanders once again showing their teamwork, 
shifting this scrum machine at twice the pace of the other competitors. A brilliant run for Arneson and Magnussen. And the first team to actually make it over the line. We gave it all we had. No, no, no. And you can see we have never seen this machine before. <laughs> well, we have been fantasizing about going to American football. So, if any coach watch this, he can contact us. <laughs> and we are ready. Just to demonstrate how heavy this scrum device actually is, just getting it back to the start needs seven men and a truck. Next competitors, Great Britain. Are you ready? Jamie Reeves and Mark Higgins also going strong. Now fading a bit though, difficult for Mark Higgins, who's almost seven foot to keep low, which is the technique needed to get the best drive. It looks like they've made the same mistake as the Americans, getting the front down and losing momentum. But they're not stopping, a determined pair of British lads here fighting for the Trebor Extra Strong Trophy. And no wonder Mark's having trouble, he's lost one of his training shoes. The question now is, will they make it? Time is running out, Jeff looks at his stopwatch. No, oh, no, it's just short. But the Great British lads do take second place. Lost a shoe though, I don't suppose that helped at all. No, it was a three-legged show. <laughs> that was awful. Yeah. I strapped my shoe on. Yeah. It still came up. Amazing. So you actually got no leverage at all on that other no. foot? I just had to keep lifting it up. So Iceland, the fastest run, get ten points. Great Britain, second with eight. Holland, third, six points. And USA, fourth with four. After two events, Iceland take the lead with 76 points, Great Britain second with 72, the USA third on 68, and Holland on 60 in fourth place. Welcome back to Pure Strength 3. You're seeing some of the strongest men in the world being put through their paces. And now a new twist on powerlifting, it's the individual log lift. First attempt will be taken by Ab Walders of Holland. The weight must be taken from the floor to the chest, and then above head. Begin. And for this event, it's a metal log, 120 kilos or 264 pounds if you prefer, in weight. This is only the first lift as more weights will be added on each round. No lift. Straighten your arms. Really, come on here. Yeah. Go lift. Oh, and Ab didn't like that. Find me up a bit. Second lifter at 120k, Jamie Reeves, Great Britain. Lots the hips. Go lift. But no problems for Jamie Reeves. This is one of his specialist events. 130k on the bar. Ab Walders, Holland. Both Bill Kazmaier from the United States and Arneson from Iceland decide to pass on 120 kilos and go on to the next Begin. weight. Go left. Down. And once again, he makes it look easy. Amazing to consider he's practically lifting his own body weight above his head.
Next lifter, Bill Kazmaier, USA. This is where Bill steps in to chance his arm. Good lift! <laughs> Bill treating it like a toy. Hardly a strain from the huge American as he hoists the metal log over his head. Next lifter, Helty Arneson, Iceland. Fantastic. Oh, uh. control. So, good lift. Easy the says healthy. Is one we'll see. Kilos. Up Walters Holland. Up goes the weight again. And Ab now needs a moment to focus his concentration. Okay. Lift. Come on, man. Oh, he looks like he's got problems. Can he make it? <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. No, he doesn't do it. Yes, 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 yes. No lift. The Dutchman drops out 140 kilos. Next lifter on will be Jamie Reeves, Great Britain. 160 kilos. Begin. Now, this is more than his own weight he's lifting here. No problem at all. Steps off the podium but retains the lift. A great performance by Jamie. Elty Arneson of Iceland. Yeah! Begin. Straighten it up. No, the Icelander no goes lift. up on 160 kilos. The next lifter will be Bill Kazmaier, United States oh. of America, 162 and a half kilos, 358 pounds. Now that's 30 pounds heavier than Bill Kazmaier's own weight. As you can see from the size, that's some weight to lift. Quick. Easy, ah, Don't even a hint of hesitation as he flings that enormous weight above his head. The satisfied face of a champion there. Next lifter, Jamie Reeves, Great Britain. 165 kilos, 364 pounds. Oh, yeah. well, Jamie Reeves of Great Britain attempting to take on the champ. Come back, Jimmy. Yes! Great push, Jimmy! You can do it! Yeah! No, it's too oh, much, but on. a sterling effort no, at the castle. The winner of the overhead lift is Bill Kazmaier, United States of America, at 162 and a half kilos. So that puts the Americans back in the running with 10 points, Great Britain with 8, Iceland on 6, and Holland 4th with 4. Our last event involves two of these seven and a half ton Mercedes trucks, each one weighing the equivalent of 70 Frank Brunos or about 50 Jeffs. Yeah, well, I've always been twice the man, Alison. <laughs> well, there are two heats, Great Britain and Iceland to go first in the truck harness pull. Jamie Reeves and Mark Higgins crouch down in the start position. Next to the Icelandic pair, Arneson well, and Magnusson. Back a bit. Ref Jeff Capes makes sure Back the seven-ton trucks are equally positioned on the start line. Yes? Block! Yeah. Block! Are you ready? Go! And they're away. And the Icelanders seem to have the edge, which is a surprise since they're so much smaller than the Brits. Suddenly, Mark and Jamie seem to have got the power, and they're really forging ahead now. And it's
it's a win for the British boys with a final drive to get their hands over the line. Jamie, don't run away there. Oh dear, I saw your shoulders go bright red. Yeah. Your neck go bright red and you went for it. Yeah, tough pull. We really needed the points. Yeah. Uh, we're starting to drift back. So it's really important we get a good score in this event. Right. But you put your head down and you race to that line. What went through your mind? Oh, just to go for it. It was, uh, it was good fun. I enjoyed it. Ever known anything like that before? It was a good race because we came back from behind. It was uh, very good fun. Why does the strain actually take its toll, Jamie, on your legs or on your uh, shoulders? It's an overall body test. You know, in hamstrings, your legs are burning. A lot of strain in your shoulders from the harness. But uh, you've just got to forget about the pain and just do what's necessary. Now it's the turn of the Americans and the Dutch. At 22.6, I believe the time is you're chasing. It's a very fast time. They started a little slow, and then they come up like, like running animals, and they catch up the, the Icelander guys, who were very fast. So it's how fast can you get it loose? If it's running, then it's, it's speed, but it's power to get it loose, and body weight, and it's a lot to do with body weight. So we're the lightest, but we hope one of the, the quickest. Are you ready? Paul! He too then, Kaz Meyer and O.D. Wilson on the left for the United States. And Ab Walders and Charlie Vandenbosch for Holland on the right. And both teams moving very fast. The Americans with the advantage using the upright style. And they're really going now, two seconds ahead of the Dutch. Be interesting to see out of the two heats who gets the fastest time there. Yeah. Oh, dear, I saw you put your arm round Bill there. Yeah, leverage. What was that for? Not because you loved him so much. Did you help him along? I loved him, but that was leverage. Leverage. I'm a bit taller here. If I grab hold, I stay down. So I said, baby, stay down. I'm a little tired. You've won it. Thank God. We're working hard. Kaz, a great feeling. You know, my partner's a world champ in powerlifting. Simple as that. He squats a thousand pounds. He's breaking the records that I set 10 years ago. That's the kind of partner I want. Somebody just as strong as I am. Did you feel him put his arm around you? Yeah, it kept me down in a nice stride position. I didn't mind a bit. Might have helped him balance a little bit. Well, it would be impossible for you to do it side by side, surely. There wasn't a whole lot of space in the block or all the way down. You notice the farther you got apart, you bang back together again. So we're a team, we just went in arm in arm. So in the final event of the day, United States take 10 points, Holland 8, Great Britain 6, and Iceland 4. And the points table for the Trebor Extra Strong Trophy now sees the Americans fighting back in the lead with 88 points, Great Britain and Iceland join second with 86, and Holland way back with 72, but there's still time to catch up. So sweet dreams for the Nightmare and Kazmaier as they take a stronghold of first position. But surely the Viking Warriors will respond next week. More action, four more events in another Pure Strength 3. Join us then. There was thunder in heaven. in our current series of Pure Strength 3 1989 coming direct to you from Scotland. At the end of today's four gruelling tests, the winners will take home the coveted Pure Strength Tree Ball Trophy. Who will it be? Will it be the American team, Bill Kazmaier and O.D. Wilson, who are currently out in front? Or will they be overtaken by the lads from Iceland or from Great Britain who are currently tying in second position? A change of venue now. We've come down to the centre of Stirling to reenact a siege here at the old military prison. Now, our strongmen have to burst through these main iron gates, then run up to these 12-foot-long battering rams to smash down the huge doors that lead into the prison proper. Now, they have to aim for the target zone here, behind which is a solid oak beam. Once they're through that, they race to the finish line to save the maidens who've been taken against their will. Oh. 
And here's a bit of testing we did earlier with three strong members of our event crew. Don't forget in the actual event, only two members of our international teams will lift that log to batter through the target panel using this 400-pound log ram. Kaz? Four maidens in there that need rescuing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm just the man for the job. I'll get in there in a hurry. So you reckon you're going to power that down and in you go? Well, uh, maybe I'll just forget the ramrod and slip underneath the door and get in there quick. Okay, team change here. Charlie, how's the leg then? You can't make this one. No, I can't walk out hardly, so I'm uh, out of this competition. Sad. Well, that's bad luck, Charlie, but we've got someone here who's going to take your place. Welcome, Adrian Smith. Hello. Feeling confident? Fairly. Fit. Great. Are the competitors ready? Are you ready? So in the first heat, Americans Bill Kazmaier and O.D. Wilson against Holland's Ab Walders and reserve Adrian Smith replacing Charlie Vandenbosch. And the Americans leading, and they're through already in two straight blows. What power there? Up the hill to the maidens in distress on the finish line, but they're not bothering with the rescue. Oh, well, never mind. The Dutch team still trying vainly to batter that beam down. Ab and Adi finally breaking through, and they're on their way to the finish. Not a good time, though. Oh, and a nice bit of Dutch maiden rescuing there from Ab Walders. And the Americans set an incredible time of 16.2 seconds in the first heat. Holland's time was 28.7. And just look at these big men move. It's very awkward. I think there's a lot of uh, luck involved. I think you can try and take two or three small hits or you know, just go for it and take one big run up at it. Uh, but then again, you, you use more time doing that. So it's, uh, it's a question of just wait and see what happens. Time keeper! Ready? Athletes! Are you ready? So into heat two, Mark Higgins and Jamie Reeves from Great Britain take on Magnus Ver Magnusson and Honky Arneson from Iceland. The Icelanders are through, one incredible punch. The British finally break down the gate, but it's Arneson and Magnusson leaping past the terrified maidens, closely followed by Jamie Reeves and Mark Higgins. Helty, what a terrific run that was. Thank you. Uh, did we win? You certainly did. 13.6. Oh, great. Uh, we really needed the points. And... I'm not sure the competition is over yet, but I think they can't catch us from this. But you know, it has been our dooms to beat guys like Kasmeyer and Oti, but we haven't peaked yet though. And I'm sure one day we, we, can be, we will be capable of lifting more than 1,100 kilo totals. What have you done to your nose, Helti? Uh, you know, in Iceland we have only had uh, two days of sunshine this summer. <laughs> then we come here and you know, you're like a, like a fire chicken, you know, fried chickens. <laughs> And so Iceland leap ahead with 10 points. The USA second pick up eight points. Great Britain third with six. And Holland fourth with four points. <laughs> Stirling Castle stands majestically above us. We're now down below at a site called the King's Knot. This used to be the formal gardens of King James I. Appropriate enough, it's where we're holding our wheelbarrow race, though these are no ordinary barrows. They're about five times the normal size, and they've been specially strengthened. And we're certainly not loading weeds into these barrows. The total weight, when fully loaded, will be something like 70 stones. This is a true test of pure strength. In lane one, Holland. In lane two, USA. Are the athletes ready? Good. Timekeepers, are you ready? So as in event one, the Americans are drawn against the Dutch in the first heat of the wheelbarrow race. And it's a fast start for the Dutch as they load two 200-pound sandbags into the barrow. And Charlie Vandenbush has decided to chance his weak leg muscle and come back into the competition. It's the pure strength stone weighing 800 pounds that's next in. So that brings the total weight in the wheelbarrow now to over 1,000 pounds. The Dutch are pulling away from the Americans, and this is a surprise, considering Charlie's leg problem. In now goes the huge beer barrel, and then it's a quick turn around the marker, and as fast as they can, back to the finish line. The Americans, I think, have realised that they miscalculated their tactics in the early part of the race, and they're now working as a team. But the Dutch teamwork never in question from the start, 
And over the line they go in the time of 45.7 seconds. The Americans finally over the line, stopping the clock on 54.4 seconds. Charlie, Ab, well done. Yes, very pleased with this one. We won the same event last year, so we had a little pride in this one. You had good tactics there, Ab. As you say, it's, uh, you know, we won it last year, so there's some pressure on us. And, oh, you do your best, you try. Let's hope the others are slower. Up now for Great Britain, it's Jamie Reeves, six foot three, and Mark Higgins, six foot nine. They're up against the swift but smaller Icelanders, Holti Arneson and Magnus for Magnuson. Ready, Iceland? Ready, Great Britain? Timekeepers? Are you ready? And that's an incredible start there for the two Icelanders. In go the sandbags, not a problem for either team. And now it's neck and neck to the pure strength stones. The Icelanders have theirs in, the British a little slower there. Iceland take the lead again as they come up to the barrels. Arneson doing the work, Magnuson waiting to run. The British are slow on the barrel lift, fading a little here I think. Iceland round the marker and heading for home. Now this is the top bit with over 1,200 pounds in those giant wheelbarrows. But they're going to set a very fast time indeed. The British unable to catch up. Incredible, the Icelanders set an identical time to the Dutch to draw in first place in the wheelbarrow race. The heavier British team trailing in this event, coming in at 55.6. I hear you've got tremendous support back home, haven't you, Helsie? Tell me about it. Yeah, well, uh, in Iceland, people follow the storming events and the powerlifting. Then it's very important for us to bring victory back home when we do well in other countries. So, like this event, we just had to, we gave it everything we had. One, two technical mistake, but we had the Viking warrior spirit all the way. <laughs> so Holland and Iceland take nine points each, the USA six points, in Great Britain, four. Overall placing show Iceland now in the lead with 105 points, the USA 102. Great Britain third with 96 and Holland on 85 points. It's the only way to travel. Off to the next event. See you after the break. Welcome back to Pure Strength, coming to you direct from the superb stronghold of Stirling Castle. Heard of the barrel roll? Well, this is similar, the barrel load. Ref, tell us all about it. Well, the competitors have to get on to the barrel. The barrel weighing 70 kilos. Okay, Adrian will show you how it's done. You'll pick up the barrel, which is 10 meters away from the actual loading bay. Uh -huh. You'll then carry the barrel, load the bait, and run back to pick up the next barrel. There are eight barrels in all. Right, okay, okay Adrian. Off you go. Right, you'll run down the course, you'll go down to the loading bay, throw it on, and he'll turn around, run back and collect the next barrel. First competitor, barrel load, Magnuson, Iceland. Well, oh, no problem with barrel number one. This event begins to take its toll as you get to the second row of barrels, but at the moment the Icelander making you look very easy. Getting a lot of encouragement there from his teammate Arneson, and he needs it. Remember, each one of these huge barrels weighs over 150 pounds. 
You can see the strain beginning to show now, and the last two barrels are going to be the deciders for a fast time. And he's made it. Eight barrels in one minute, 14 seconds. A fast time to beat. Bill Kazmaier, United States of America. And Bill Kazmaier, who loves the Scottish pipes, misjudges it on his first barrel. Quite a different style here, but it's over. And he's decided not to use the shoulder lift. Instead, Kazmaier is using a long throw to get those huge barrels over the loading bay. No, it's back on his shoulder for the fifth barrel, and three left to go. He's slowing down now. Bill looks in trouble. Oh, he's losing it. Can he make it with the last load? But he has made it, and Kazmaier finishes in 1 minute 16 seconds, just 2 seconds slower than the Icelander. Did you ask for that pipe music to play? Yeah, thought it would help me a little more. But uh, it's tough to pull it out. It's a hard event. Next competitor, barrel load, Mark Higgins. Come on, and Higgins. at six foot seven, Mark should have an advantage in this event. Moving well there. Come on, Higgins, yeah! Come on, you're looking good, come on! Come on! Come on. Oh, but the strain setting in at the end of the first row. Come on, come on. Slowing down now. Those barrels really beginning to have some effect on this strong man. And look at the pain on his face. Last one to go, but his time's not going to be good, I'm afraid. Oh, and he's dropped it. A disaster for the British. Finally makes it a time of 1 minute 20 seconds. Well, the challenge is now on because Holland's to go next and Ab Walders is said to be the fastest strongman in the world. He's chasing Iceland's time of 1 minute 14.2 seconds and he's just about to start. And so far Ab's making this look like child's play. Well, the first row over in a very fast time. But as we've seen, this is where it really begins to get tough. Amazingly, he's not slowing down yet, though. Two to go. The pain's setting in now. 
The last one. Oh, and he's dropped it. The same problem as the British. Can he get it back up there? Yes, he can. Ab, if you can look up for one second, because I can tell you the good news. That was one minute, oh six. You won. Terrific. <laughs> I could kiss you too. The fastest strong man in the world. Some well needed points there. Holland take 10, Iceland second with eight, the USA have six points, and Great Britain bringing up the rear with four. Well, the old market square is now being cordoned off and it's ready for our final event an explosive finish to pure strength three. It's the car charge. In the next event, the car pull and push is going to require a great deal of athletic ability, a lot of speed, a good bit of endurance. The speed's going to come in getting the car up to maximum speed, and then racing back down the hill. A little bit of coordination in hooking up the rope. The back man just simply leans into the car, pushes as hard as he can. The front man pulls with the rope. I'm basically a power lifter, but this is a speed event, so we're going to see how we fare in it. When we was dealing with the trucks, that was relatively my kind of a thing, but uh, I'm looking forward to the event, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. In lane one, Holland. In lane two, Great Britain. Are you ready? And as they go up the hill for the first time, pulling these fully loaded Volkswagen Golf saloon cars, Jamie Reeves pulling for Great Britain, Mark Higgins pushing the car. For Holland, Adrian Smith steps in for injured Charlie Van der Bush and Ab Walters giving it all he's got at the back there. But the British in the first stage are over the line first, and they now race back to collect the bigger saloon car, the Volkswagen Passat, and this is where the going gets tough. And they've got to get it moving and you can see just how much harder this is with four 12 stone passengers in the car and a gradient of one in six thrown in just for good measure and the dodger having problems and dropping back the britain's jamie reeves has turned round to do a reverse heave mark higgins getting that power down summoning up every last ounce of energy left in their bodies to get that car over the finish line. Oh, and the strain showing on Ab Walder's face. The most arduous bit is just getting the car over that line and can the British do it? And it's finally there. The Dutch team still trying and the car has come to a halt. And I can tell you that will be almost impossible to get any momentum going on that incline now. No, they've called it a day. Bad luck to the Dutch team. is Iceland and lane two is United States of America. Are you ready? Bill Kazmaier pulling and O.D. Wilson pushing for the USA. Holti Arneson, the tower, and Magnus Vermagnusson, pusher for Iceland. The Americans already making it look easy, but the Icelanders have got their car moving quite quickly now. The Americans racing back to collect the second car with the Icelanders hot on their heels. Well, Bill Kazmaier taking it easy, strapping the tow line onto his belt there. But this may be a tactical error as he's losing valuable time with the Icelanders already on their way back up the hill. points all important because if the Americans get the fastest time and the Icelanders the slowest the final placings will be a dead heat between these two countries Kazmaier's got the power down now OD in a slow heave and Kazmaier showing his strength here just pulling his car ahead of the Icelanders 
who've lost a little of their drive. There's no doubt about the winners in this event, Bill Kazmar and O.D. Wilson for the USA. The Icelanders finally over the line, and timing's all important now to decide the overall winners. Is it going to be a dead heat in pure strength three, or have Iceland pipped last year's winners, the Americans, to the post? Well, there you have it. USA take 10 points, Great Britain 8, Iceland 6, and Holland 4 points. And that means our winners are Iceland on 119 points, just behind the USA with 118. Great Britain take 108 points, and Holland, 99. And that brings us to the end of Pure Strength 3, and the finish couldn't have been closer, just one point in it. It's now my pleasure to introduce you to the marketing director of Trebor, our sponsors, Mr. Roger Mumby. Hi, Roger. Hi, it's uh, his job now to present the winners with the trophy, and the winners are, on 119 points, Helti Arneson and Magnus Ver Magnusson of Iceland. Well done. <laughs> Jump.